View cultist. I'm Mikey. These stand for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have They Hide in the Light. So They Hide in the Light is a story by the horror architect on Reddit. Check my notes. No sleep? That can't be right. That's a that name is the not... title is far too small. <laughs> Exactly. That 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 must be a typo. Hang on, let me yeah. let me double check here. Hang on, let me check the tabs. Nope, that is a Reddit no sleep story. Weird. I don't believe it. <laughs> wow. Um <laughs> uh, but yeah, goofing aside, yeah, it's on Reddit No Sleep. You can check it there. And uh let's do our initial rundowns. Or not <laughs> are all doing rundowns? rundowns? I was not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so Let's do our initial recommendations. Um, I'm going to recommend it. I am going to partially recommend it. I will recommend it. All right. Let's see. Let's see where this goes then, shall we? As we go down the rundown. Uh, So when Oliver, our narrator, was young... Uh, He was responsible for turning the lights off in his house for his family at night, uh, which was unfortunate because he always felt there was something waiting for him in the darkness, like waiting to get him. So he's afraid of the dark or more or less afraid of the thing in the darkness. Uh, One night he went to turn off the lights and running up the stairs, as he always did for the safety of his home or for the safety of his room. Uh, As he was settling uh, settling in to read some comics in his room, his mom called out from her room to tell Oliver to turn off the lights because, to his surprise, when he looked out, the lights were been were back on. Um, <clears throat> so he went downstairs and went to turn them off. Uh, as he was getting up the stairs the second time, the lights turned back on, and then the tap in the kitchen sink downstairs also turned on or opened, I guess. Um, Oliver called his dad because he was a little freaked out who came to his rescue and went downstairs to check seemingly everything was okay uh, so Oliver's dad turned off the uh, the kitchen sink and then turned off the light and started walking up to, uh, to uh, meet Oliver at the top of the stairs and then the lights flicked off uh, flicked on again cautious Oliver's dad started back down the stairs but stopped halfway as his neck was twisted right around so that his face, his head was facing Oliver's or his face was facing Oliver upstairs. Um, And he died Uh, as his body fell to the bottom of the stairs. Oliver's mom came out to check to see what was going on and freaked out over the, the dead dad at the bottom of the stairs. And then that's when the lights flicked off of their own volition. Or at least of the from the thing that was in the darkness or hiding in the light. Title drop. Um, in the darkness at the bottom of the stairs, next to the body, there was a dark silhouette of a creature of some kind, um, and it was slowly climbing up the stairs to get Oliver. Uh, his mom grabbed him uh, before the creature could get any closer, and with his sister, they hid in her bathtub, and she called the police. Uh, the dad's death was chalked up to a stairway accident, which is apparently is a surprisingly plausible cause of death in America. <laughs> um, alas, Oliver has been writing down this story to inform people like us, the reader, about these creatures who hide in the light. Title drop again. Uh, similar to how people can hide in shadows. Um, and it's been 31 years since those events. Mom died in a bathtub accident. And quote his, yeah, quote unquote, and his sister died from a bedfall, quote unquote. But Oliver knows the truth. The creatures got them. Uh, Oliver has survived this long by simply living in darkness, where the creatures can e- can't easily detect him. Uh, 
but he is tired of it all. So after he finishes this story, he plans to turn on the lights and end it. Finn. So I suppose we'll move on to everyone tolerates the grammar inquisitions at this point. Uh, I've got a couple. Let's start with this one here. There was nothing particularly special with the house or the area. We were a niche neighborhood, and we knew everyone in it. Niche or nice? I suppose the former word, like niche, does work. It just seems odd to me, and like ma- makes me think of the of the latter should be the the actual wording. Mostly because of that old saying, like, this used to be a nice neighborhood kind of thing. Well, it, it could be sort of like a, a posh neighborhood. Um, so niche could still explain the neighborhood. Yeah. Niche communities are small groups of people with similar interests who come together online to build relations. Oh, that's on. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I mean, again, like, I I mean, again, like, I'm I'm not willing to like discount it entirely, but like, to me, I think it should have been nice neighborhood rather than niche. Although niche isn't a bad word for it, I guess. It just maybe needs a little bit more clarification if you're going to use that word. Or just all the people in that neighborhood, akin to what I was improperly reading, (laughs) they all have similar interests and they're all like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, they could all be of like a niche group. So. Yeah, or it all could be like parents with kids. Yeah. So there's a lot of kids in the neighborhood type thing. Like or like yeah. a neighborhood that are all McMansions. Like that is a niche neighborhood. Exactly. Like or like yeah, like there are like it's not an invalid word. I just thought it should be nice rather than niche. Yeah. Oh, I also no. don't understand if it is supposed yeah. to be a specific niche, it does not go in to talk about what the niche is. Yeah, it, it kinda needs all. that clarification. Yeah. <laughs> if it's gonna use that. So maybe just an H slipped in there, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Well, I'll get into that in my actual thoughts, I'm sure. Okay. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> um, is is it about like how like the creatures are actually their neighbors? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll we'll hold off. We'll we'll hold off the suspense till then. <laughs> uh, but on to the next one. A constant scratching of my bedroom window, comma. I had told myself was just a nearby or was just the nearby tree period. So I don't think the comma is necessary. I think that honestly where the comma is, it should actually be like the word that. So it's like a constant scratching of my bedroom window that I had told myself was just the nearby tree. Um, yeah. I almost think you don't even need a comma at all. Yeah. Oh, that's what I mean. You don't even need the comma, like just or oh, just, just replace that. Just replace it with that word. Whole. I thought you meant comma and also that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, and then kind of linked to this. Um, so like this is like the first thing that we get, and then it's a period, and then we get this: the continuous comma almost rhythmic creaks of the attic floor above. Period. A random rattle of cl- of the closet door. Period. Um, and this is like kind of just like a listing of of different like phenomenon that they, or disturbances that they experience for, uh, like leading up to like the, the initial, the final, like kind of attacker um, thing. I, so it's, a, it's obviously it's a listing of like the different disturbances, but in these short sentences, it kind of bugged me. I feel like they could have used something like maybe a semicolon instead of the periods to kind of like properly like list the, the different types of phenomena. Like semicolon where? Like so, where the periods are, um, replace the period, period with a se- no. So like a constant scratching from my bedroom window that oh. I told myself was just the nearby tree semicolon, the continuous comma, almost rhythmic creaks of the attic floor above semicolon, a random rattle of closet doors period. Because that I don't like know, man. well no, and I I looked it up actually like semicolon would be a an appropriate use for like combine kind of um connecting two similar but separate like trains of thought because they're like, all these, dis- they're all talking about these small noises yeah these different disturbances but they're all like separate and like you, i wouldn't put like a comma or anything like that because like that would make the sentence way too fucking long <laughs> but like it's it's naming it's listing off like these different like occurrences in different like short sentences so like kind of it t- when i was reading it 
the use of like them as like set like just stand like kind of just sentences kind of bugged me like i feel like it, there should have been a different way of like listing off the uh the different disturbances uh yeah well you could have started at the beginning of the paragraph and had the uh, the mention of the small noises and then a regular colon and then listing off the noises um, yeah or like even like maybe even do like a list format like a like a, with a bullet point thing maybe <laughs> I don't know it's just like the way it was like the way it's structured it kind of bugged me that like how like, was, like there's like all these like different disturbances but like they're all done in like short sentences like one after the other really not and short it, they're kind of short the only short one is a random <laughs> like, rattle of the closet doors but like it, take them out e- each out of context like if you just like a standalone context kind of like what we do with the junction junction thing it's just kind of like there needs there's no segue to them there's just like these random like sentences um that like they stop and then they start with something new and then they stop and they start into something new and it's like clearly a, a list but like the way it's structured it kind of bugged me like as a as a listing of things mm-hmm. yeah i wouldn't be against your suggestion that's fine okay i also don't uh, think it's weird as it is that's all i'm saying that's fair uh and then <laughs> well <laughs> and then the next thing i have is uh first comma leaky faucet period the house now had a permanent stench of dot da, da, da offness, comma. Then doors opening on their own, even locked ones. On their own, so I, even. Yeah. No, on their own dash even. Yeah, locked own ones. Even. It's a term. Is it? No. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't uh, yeah, know. I didn't Google it. <laughs> so, another thing, like, well, the dash is you is sometimes used in story uh, in in sentences as a dot 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 sort of like as a break between like two things, like sort of like a bra- like the in brackets sort of thing. Like you like you could put it in place of like brackets. Yeah, a dash mm-hmm. on either side, not just on the front. No, actually, um, used for the um, uh, the first time. Well, it's also like it. What the, it has a period at the end, so and then that's the end of the pe- the, se- the the sentence. So like, it wouldn't have the dash after it. So just replace the dash with a comma. <laughs> yeah, you could also just replace it with a comma or like, yeah, yeah, with brackets. That's what or, I would do, honestly. Yeah. Uh, also, that first sentence <laughs> I do in quotes because it's three l- fucking letters. <laughs> three um, sentence, actually, it, yeah, it could have just been like a comma <laughs> or a semicolon. To include, yeah, sorry, I meant letters. Or I meant, I meant words, sorry. Um, the, uh, I feel like that period could have just been a comma or even a semicolon to include it with the rest of the fucking listing things. <laughs> like, or just first, like, leaky first, faucet. Yeah. Or like, add more to it. Like, first, there were leaky faucets that were turning on with no reason. Like, sure. You know, flush it out a bit more. Yeah. But it still gets up, that, that, that starts doing that the it's it's doing the same listing thing that from like the previous where it's just like a single sentence description of a uh, of of one of the weird anomalies then another single sent or another single sentence description of, of one of the weird anomalies then another one it's like dude just fucking put these in a fucking list <laughs> like ah uh. it, it, it sort of started really bugging me the more i like read the more i tried to like look into it and such i um, remember the mental state of the character yeah. <laughs> also, also, he's apparently read, uh, writing, typing this or writing this all down in the dark. So we're it's it's amazing that it's as good as uh it's, it's as good as it is. Screens have lights on them. I have a whole thing in my actual thoughts about that. that. Well, no, I have a whole thing like a whole like argument about like yeah yeah he could be doing it from a computer. It's in my actual thoughts. I'll get to it in a second, <laughs> or I'll get to it in a minute. Um. And then my last uh, grammar inquisition here. Um, I remember him coming out of his room a bit annoyed as I had interrupted his work, but he put on a comfort face once I real once he realized I was scared shitless. I feel like comfort should just be uh, should actually be comforting, like put on a comforting face. Um, mm-hmm. just because like a comfort face kind of like I, it's. It's again. It's, put on it, his comfort face. Yeah, it's not wrong, but it's not right to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because it's a description of his face, so he's putting on a comforting face to, for his son. But uh, I, I do, I digress. Uh, that's the end of my grammar inquisition. <laughs> Mikey, these stands for evil. 
All right. Uh, I have a conjunction junction. Ooh. It was my job in the family to turn the lights off downstairs. But I really shouldn't have felt safe at all. It started with small noises. It continued for about three months before it started to become more than just a noise. It was just vaguely humanoid, only a silhouette, and walking up the stairs. It was the most obvious answer. After all, 12,000 people die in, of stairway accidents a year. Finn. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that escalated. <laughs> it was also like, it was it was kind of succinct, but also like there were just ga- like ah. <laughs> it's like I'm afraid of the. I was like I. It was my job to turn up the lights. So, <laughs> and it's like, but I wasn't safe. The creature had like was it was vaguely humanoid. <laughs> but that's the uh, that's the uh, uh, the the average uh, the average amount of deaths of uh, from stairways is uh, <laughs> it's like what ah. Uh, <laughs> It throws a lot at you. Yeah. You seem like it's just a stairway monster and that's it. Yeah. As well. <laughs> it's almost like out of context, these make no sense. <laughs> Weird how that happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for those unaware, Mikey grabs all these sentences throughout the story that start with words that they probably shouldn't, like it's ands or buts, because there's always better words. So wait, hang on. I'm not done yet. Does it does that mean that the stairwell is uh is actually a humanoid figure then <laughs> and is responsible for the deaths of twenty five thousand people in America <laughs> yearly. <laughs> is this is this an elaboration on the stairs in the woods? <laughs> the stairs in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the the phantom stairs. Like they 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 <laughs> or, no no th- th- this is the prequel where yeah. the stairs have a house. Ah, I see. Oh, or, or you've heard of Slender Man. This is Stair Man. Because <laughs> a vaguely humanoid figure who's uh-huh. also stairs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. But yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> Gamer, you're up. No, I'm not. You're up. Oh, is it Stop actual happening. pub? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or rather, you got the ones that I had. Okay, cool. Uh, well, yeah, on to actual thoughts then. So I'm going to start with this one here. It was my job in the family to turn the lights off downstairs, to be the one that welcomes darkness into a familiar space, to have it chase me up the stairs. Darkness cannot chase, but that's what it felt like. Honestly, like what, as soon as I started reading this part of the story, or, like this beginning of the story, I was remembering um, my mom and my own feelings toward my nana's old basement <laughs> my mom would tell me stories about how she like did not like going down in the basement of her uh, of her house or her childhood house or like had to like she'd have to turn the lights off at the bottom of the stairs and then she would run up the stairs imagining somebody like grabbing her legs for the, through the steps um and i remember as a kid going in those stairs like going down that basement and like having like it was always so dark even with the lights on. So whenever you had to turn the lights off, I would always get this feeling that something was going to chase me. So So right off the get go real for you. (laughs) Yeah. I was, I was able to connect with the story pretty easily because of like my own, like personal experiences, I guess (laughs) of, of this, of, of something akin, but not like, at least at this point in the story, not like the supernatural elements, unless (laughs) that house. (laughs) Yeah. That house was secretly. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, uh, that's just one thing I wanted to bring up because I was actually able to like connect with the story a little bit. Um, well, a lot of it then, actually, from the sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we get this. It's like you wonder why you only see these monsters in the dark. Why the only why why you only become aware of them in the dark? I have learned that the, in the same way we hide in the shadows, the light is their shadow to hide in, to wait, and one day it stopped waiting. I really like this this concept for a monster, like yeah, me too. A monster that is able to like sneak or or go undetected in the light, similar to like how somebody in like an RPG or even like in real life can like hide in like the shadows, wait and and like let somebody go by. Like it makes so much fucking sense. <laughs> 
like the like, idea that all monsters in real life are like that, and that's why we don't see them. Oh yeah, because like when it's wide open and clear, and you see everything, like you would think, okay, I could see everything in this room, so there's nothing here, and yet that is what they actually are able to camouflage themselves in. Oh my, yeah, it's like like uh, yeah, it's like a natural like super like or not, maybe not even like a supernatural. It's just like a nat like an extraordinary camouflage that they have. Um, that like our eyes like, or maybe like it's 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 something to do with our own optics. Like it fucking sucks. Or like they have like they they found the the um uh the blind spot in our optics, <laughs> or they've been given that kind of ability like through like evolution and shit. Uh, so like that's why Bigfoot like you only see him in like in like dim woods, <laughs> like the dim lighting of woods, and you never see him out abroad. Or like if it's a cloudy day, you can kind of see him. And that's why bl- he's actually blurry in the photos. He's actually blurry in real life too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's uh, and a, similarly, like, like HD picture. Yeah, and and like similarly, like there is that old like now this old Loch Ness monster like uh photo, like the famous one, like of like the creature, the silhouette of like the long neck and stuff of like that. Now technically that is a hoax, but like if it if it weren't a hoax, it was shot during like the even like during like twilight, like during like the sunset, like the sun setting and stuff. So like that's how it, that's why it's a silhouette because it, it's like showing like part of it out there yeah. <laughs> exposed. Oh my god. Monsters are secretly invisible this whole time. <laughs> they walk Monsters among us. Monsters are secretly real this whole time. Yeah. They've been decrypted. <laughs> but it's... Nice. Because like we, we figured out what their secret was. How they how they walk among us. Yeah, it's stuff. also the ju- uh, on a yeah. cryptids and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Cool. <laughs> it better before you started explaining it, to be honest. that That's part of the joke, too. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I, I love this idea. This this idea that like monsters hide in the light, whereas like similar to how we hide in the in the darkness. Um, I'll move on. <laughs> uh, everyone was so nice. Uh, everyone was so friendly. You felt safe enough to not lock your doors at night, even if your neighborhood is a niche or nice place. <laughs> that is still a bad idea. Like again. I remember when we moved out of Toronto and came up to uh, came up north and like to our neighborhood that we live now and people were like we thought people our neighbors were nuts when they told us oh yeah you don't have to lock your doors it's such a nice little neighborhood it's like yeah no <laughs> and then like a couple of like a couple of months later somebody started breaking into homes <laughs> so yeah. like yeah no and and Honestly, like, may- like maybe the fact that there, do- the some people don't lock their doors in this neighborhood, maybe that's how the creatures got in. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just a little bit of conjecture. At the end, mm-hmm. um, or you know, because they're invisible, they can just walk in every time you open the door. Yeah, or like they'd have an easier time of like, oh, the door is unlocked and they're invisible. Ergo, this neighborhood is not long for this world. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I'll move on to the next thing I have here. Uh, he turned off the lights and walked upstairs to comfort me. Relief was overwhelming. Click. The buzz of, of light seemed to have gotten louder as if the, as if to mock how futile our attempts were to turning them off. Wait here, Ollie. I just need to check the, the electrical board. I watched my dad go down the steps again each foot making the familiar thump on the stairs. Then my dad stopped midway. His head turned to look at me, and he was looking at me funny. I remember his, viv- his, <clears throat> I remember his face vividly. It was a mixture of shock and intense sorrow. His body was still facing the base of the stairs. His neck was facing the wrong way. And just like that, he was dead. The following thumps of his body falling are still etched in my, into my mind. God, that was such a ride. <laughs> like that, that, that scene, like starting from like the dad going up the stairs after like to come and then click and the lights come back on. It's like, oh shit, shit's got, shit's gone real. And like the dad's like, cause you know that the dad at that point is like, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then going down the stairs, stopping. And then his, and then the, the, how it describes like his, uh, he turned to face him, but he was, his body was still looking the other way. It's like, Oh, like I got chills, like literal chills when it was, when I read that, I was like, Oh, Oh no. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Cause when I read that the entire first time I read the story, I did not catch 
that his head was split around backwards. Oh no! It took a second reading to be like, "Oh, okay, I guess that's what's happening." Uh, yeah, see, I, I caught it immediately, and I was and I was horrified in a good way. I was like, "Oh god, it's it's gone. She's getting real. This monster ain't playing around." Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I just thought it was really cool. Like, again, a, another cool scene in the story. Uh, and then we have this part here. Uh, her screams were cut short by the light done downstairs. They had switched back off. This revealed the darkness that had done this to my dad. It was just vaguely humanoid, only a silhouette, and walking up the stairs. Their walk was almost in an awkward slow motion, as if it knew it'd get me eventually. And I somehow knew there was no escaping it. So I'm just going to take some notes here for a scene in a horror scenario I'll run, I'll run sometime later. Like, maybe I'll just even stab this creature completely. <laughs> like, <laughs> legitimately, this and the description earlier with, like, the dad's death and stuff, I visualized perfectly as, like, a movie sequence from, like, a horror movie. Um, I don't like, get why they turned the lights back off. To show them, it's like, it's like, we're here, motherfuckers. <laughs> Um, how would that help <laughs> i yeah okay there there's a plot hole l- later on in the story when we find out like the the tr- like how they they perceive in the world and stuff but like i i think it was just like amping up for like ho- like fear factor actually i do also have an i i do actually have a um uh, uh some actual thoughts on like their motives uh, a little in a moment so mm-hmm. um Actually, that's right now. (laughs) Starting with this quote. (laughs) Yeah, starting with this quote. Uh, I have survived this long because I have learned that these creatures cannot harm you in the dark, similar to how you cannot see them in the light. They cannot see you in the dark. Wait. (laughs) So it's cool that these creatures hide in the light and all, but it's blind to us in the dark? It, It does kind of go on to say that like you need to be quiet still in the dark so i guess like they they can still hear us and they can still like notice us in the darkness but visually they can't see us Mm -hmm. also if we are actually vulnerable most in the light why don't they attack us and like when when we're moving around in, in during the light like ignoring the reason of it has an inscrutable nature or its motivations are unknowable like that bullshit. <laughs> um, maybe it's, I, I have some of my own ideas. Like maybe it's just like, it likes to play with its food, <laughs> like, or, or play with, play with its little toys. Like it's like, because it's sadistic. Um, or it actually does feed on us, like on like the psychic energy that we give off when we feel a false sense of security. And then like, it gets a rush of energy when it strikes at us and we realize we aren't safe. So like it, it basically it's a fear. It's a, it's a, um, a fear monger or like a, a cognivore that feeds on, on the, um, that, and that like sort of like that dread that we get when we turn off the light and we have to like rush up and stuff like that. So because it like killed the father, it fed on him. So it doesn't need to feed for a little while. Yeah, maybe. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because otherwise, like I was, I'm trying to like I was trying to think of like why don't they attack us in the light? <laughs> like they did. Oh, they did. Yeah, they did. But like, why, why didn't they, they do, do it, it earlier? Yeah, like why uh, are they just like holding back their like hunger or their uh, their 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 need to kill us? Or are they just like you know I'm bored. Let's just, I'm just gonna kill this guy. <laughs> I just saw it that like they're not stupid. Like if they're just going around killing the entire human race like in one day. Or whatever, or just even sweeping through a town super quick, that'll raise some eyebrows. Yeah. So they're spacing out their kills a whole lot to make it seem like just normal accidents, so they could just keep doing it. True. Yeah. And also, like it, it is sort of there's um like it could be also that they they don't want to draw too much attention to themselves because yeah, during the day they are invisible to us, but at night <laughs> they're not, and they can't see us necessarily. Like we can't see them. But like human, like if if humans as a whole know about their existence, they are definitely going to get hunted. <laughs> sure, I just said that, but yeah. Okay, sorry. I did. I yeah. I'm just kind of clarifying on that. Then. Mm. Um, but yeah. So 
maybe, yeah, perhaps that's why. Is like they're more of like an ambush predator. Like they're they're smart and stuff like that, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just <laughs> it's like wait, <laughs> they they're bl- they they're blind in darkness. How do they see us? Okay, it makes sense. There there's some they, they're not entirely blind to us in the dark. You're also thinking about this from the view of a human being who cannot see in the dark and can see in the light. Yeah. Think of it in the complete opposite of that. Yeah. Like they are equally like they, they can. Yeah. They, yeah, I, I get to, I get Your what you're night saying. blindness is the same as their day blindness. Yeah. And vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my last actual thought here, uh, I write this because I write this because I am tired of living in the dark. I write this to warn you of my story, to look out for the signs that you or your family have been marked. So, yeah, I said earlier, it's like, wait, why? how is he writing this in the dark? And then, like, obviously, he's probably typing this on a laptop or something like that. Doesn't the laptop light not count as, like, a light source that, like, he's in? And so, like, they'd be able to see mm. him as he types? <laughs> yeah. Here's the other thing. <laughs> living in darkness for, what, 20 years? Yeah. I'm sure no, he's gotten good no. at blind writing. 31 years, technically. Yeah, he could probably write completely blind. Okay, so yeah, maybe yeah, and write or type. Like, yeah. yes, th- this is potentially, if this is written down on a piece of paper, it's not necessarily written as clean as this is that we're reading. Yeah. It could also still be messy, but still legible. Or maybe hardly legible, but this was edited and someone put it online or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I, I get you. Like, as it, it's a little bit of a plot hole for me, but like at the same time, like it's still a cool idea. And like, I 100% want to use this like story itself, or at least a variant of it as like a letter prop in a game scenario with that same creature. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I could see somebody like, like the, the investigators stumble upon a, like a room, like, like basically the aftermath of the kid of the guy dying or like, like the, a homicide or like a, a mysterious homicide. And like, you guys are like agents or police officers or investigators checking in on the like the house or the apartment that he lives in and it's like the all the lights have been all the bulbs have been pulled out of the uh the, the light fixtures and stuff and then like you see this like either a laptop or like again like he's a letter that this guy supposedly wrote in the middle of it and then that's where like the characters become aware of like this weird supernatural thing and then maybe they get marked because they're in proximity to like the last time somebody was killed by this thing mm-hmm. i personally like the idea of him actually writing it on Reddit because that's better immersion. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's probably likely that, like that. This is that Oliver is supposed to be like the Reddit poster, mm-hmm. but uh, especially since Reddit No Sleep is all about that, like that you are supposed to be writing in universe to your fiction and such. But like um, you said, I'm sure if you look up the horror architect on Reddit, he's probably written other things. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's alive and well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying it wasn't like a burner account for like a hundred percent full immersion. Yeah. Though I'm sure there are people that have done that on, on Reddit. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, that's the end of my actual thoughts. So Mikey, these stands for evil. All right. Um, so my first actual thought here, I have the quote, uh, the buzz of light seemed to have gotten louder as if to mock how futile our attempts were at turning them off. And then soon after, his dad dies. Mm -hmm. And this reminded me of um, that story we did a while ago about the robot cat that only exists in the light. Oh, yes. The uh, from the um, liminal, uh, the liminal warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure I actually had that right. Yeah, that's from that, yeah, the yeah, the liminal warehouse is actually what it's actually called. called that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh and it's uh it's out of the uh what the heck is the series called? Uh oh it's from the uh, the cold relics series of creep pastas. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so it's like the the whole there's something going on with the light that's yeah. slightly different from just brought me to that so i was like okay now it's dangerous but then the rest of the time it's not buzzing that loud so it's not dangerous at all it'll be really funny (laughs) the niche neighborhood 
is actually a clue that this entire neighborhood is actually an experiment by some group. And like, una- una- like, and the neighbor, the neighborhood are like test subjects that are unaware of like it. And so like their lights are actually like creating this like dimensional, like, um, it's the field. same, it's the same, it's, f- the, same. it's the same technology, but like yeah. implemented in America, maybe. <laughs> um, and like, there's, it's just breaching into the other, into another reality that like these things are able to like get in from. And so like, <laughs> his his mom dying and his sister dying like are either yes they they were the creatures because they were overexposed for for who knows how many how long by the light so like now they're kind of affected but they're infected with the uh like the radiation or whatever of it or they were just accidents and he's been hiding for 31 years in the darkness for no fucking reason like he's gonna turn on those lights and nothing's gonna happen <laughs> Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and he's then he's not too... gonna put up a follow up post and be like, because he's so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna put it because he's like, well, I've already posted it. This is, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna yeah. never touch this again. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a single like neighborhood <laughs> that is like an experiment. <laughs> oh, I could, I could see now. I want to use that as an idea for a Tales from the Loop game. <laughs> Because like that game that that's that are the it's an RPG from Free, Free League that like is plays off of the um, uh, setting of the same name Tales from the Loop uh, and it's like yeah like basically 1980s 1990s but like with weird advanced technology that is also kind of creepy when it because when it malfunctions and such mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah it's just like goddamn <laughs> all right so. Uh, my my next actual thought here uh, is probably going to parrot something Colton said earlier, but I don't care. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, similar to how you cannot see them in the light, they cannot see you in the dark, which is why I have lived the past 25 years in darkness, living with the sight of these creatures in exchange for their sight of me. Um, to which my answer is, well, how can he see them in the dark. Our eyes work by taking in light. If there's no light, then he can't see. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, does he have night vision goggles or something? And they only show up when it... <laughs> Maybe? Uh, uh, like... Uh... Maybe uh, like there's uh, some uh, ambient light from like outside or something like that, like through coming through the windows, and like so he just lives in the, like he lives in a sh- in a shadowed like apartment with no lights except for like what's outside or w- if he has like a flashlight or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it just creatures give off a little bit of light themselves, like their eyes glow or something that isn't talked about, or they have like a little aura around them. I don't know. Yeah, because that's kind of what I pictured. Like, I, well, I when I when we see the creature or when we see the silhouette of the creature that the of the stairs, I kind of just pictured it as like the, there is some light down there from like a window or something like kind of shining in. So it's, it's like dim down there. It's like pretty dark, but then this thing is like really dark. So it actually does stand out against the darkness. The problem is we don't know how quote unquote absolute darkness he's living in. Like is yeah. he boarded up his mm. windows and there's no light coming in ever. Yeah. Or is yeah. it just normal darkness? Yeah, does he just not live with yeah. lights on <laughs> ever? Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. Yeah. And then what does he do during the day if he has to go get food? Yeah, exa- I, I think maybe he maybe he goes out at night, but then even like at night, like you we live in a lit there's, in a a lit society. So like yeah. there's street lights, yeah. there's street cars, lights. like yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's illumination <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Well, and yeah, just going into the grocery store that's always fully lit. <laughs> like, I mean, he could order food, like, or like order, like, get like, uh, like basically order groceries to be delivered to his door, and then he just like quickly dashes, the, like, to get them out from uh, from the entrance and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a very again. It's, he has yeah, sorry. again at that point he has to use technology, which is going to be the laptop or cell phone, both of which emit light. They they can they don't have to like he could dim the light so they give some light but not a lot <laughs> like yeah the problem is we don't know like the threshold of like how much light is enough light that they can attack you through yeah mm-hmm. so maybe he maybe him using the screen light 
sure they could see him, but it's not enough light that they could actually uh, interact with him. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because maybe the lights need to buzz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or maybe like <laughs> they're not like omnipresent. So like maybe um, like he can he'll 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 like run the light like he'll like turn all, all lights are off. He'll he'll like survey a, the room he's in, lock the door, like lock the door when he's sure that the creature isn't in the ho- in the room with him in the darkness. And then he's able to use a laptop and stuff like that. So like he can use light, some light, but like not like doesn't like light a room. So he could be he could have been playing. He's, he could basically just be playing it like safe and like being a survivalist, but just like using this rule of like stay out of the light sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a lot there that isn't explained. Yeah, which is going to happen because it's a short story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So so my next quote here. Uh, as long as you're dead, silent, uh, you will live to see another day. Uh, so you have to be dead silent in the dark most of the time to survive. Yeah. My problem with this is that the human body makes its own noises. So you're still making noise, even if you're being as quiet as possible. I, okay. I, I know. I think he just means as a human being, <laughs> as long as you are not trying to make additional noise, you're fine. I don't yes. think it's, I don't think he has a decibel reader. <laughs> yeah. <told> him. <laughs> Thank you, gamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i think i think it's like he's he, as long as you're like quiet and like roll move silently <laughs> or your stealth roll <laughs> successfully you can you can evade them in the, in the darkness like I, as long as you're not like making loud no, enough noises that like would uh, might alert of this cre- one of these creatures i think you're fine mm-hmm. yeah well uh, and this leads into my next thought of what if he is dead and his family is actually a family of vampires? Explain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, first of all, we have the, the niche neighborhood, which could be the vampire neighborhood. Oh my God. I'm, it's clicking now. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> Second, uh, we have the comfort face that his dad puts on. Because vampires can change their face and whatnot. Oh, a glamour. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it's basically they don't like light. And it could be uh, a human with advanced uh, um, tech that mm-hmm. uh, allows him to be invisible, but only if there's light. Okay. That's not where I thought you were going. My my easier solution to this, <laughs> without like high technology, is just this is from the perspective of a, of the va- of a vampire. So like these monsters in quotes hide in the light, like we hide in the shadows. So it's mm-hmm. just like it's it's a it's a it, it's just a, like a, a kid vampire and his vampire family in their vampire neighborhood, and some fucking hunters who are stalking during the day. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about so it's actually like this is all being uh, from the perspective of a vampire family <laughs> and this mm-hmm. that's why he hides in the darkness and so so like yeah the whole thing you think it's actually a human that's been talking the whole time it's actually been a vampire who's afraid of vampire hunters <laughs> it's 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 full-blown <laughs> i am legend where the vampire society is afraid of the one human who has become the monster who has become the legend <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and again, I don't hate that idea. It's just wow. <laughs> that is that is such an interesting interpretation of this story. <laughs> I'm surprised is the SNTF involved? <laughs> well, they could be the ones taking out the vampires. <laughs> yeah, they well, they could be the ones taking out the vampires. They could also be the guy the, the, the police who's like, Yeah, it was just a stare, it was just a stare accident. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, they're just doing cover up. Yeah, they're just doing cover up yep. work. <laughs> yep. They're vampires who don't realize they're vampires. <laughs> or don't realize that that's bad. 
Uh, so that's why it's a niche. Te- it's a niche neighborhood. Like they're all like familial. And they're all nice to each other, but they're all like have this affliction, this vampirism, that and like they're not aware of it fully. They still think they're people. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that being said, why would vampires not? Why would vampires use lights, but also not be able to see humans in the light? That is true. Um, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe these these vampires, maybe like that whole like the vampires can't go out during the day. Maybe that like extends to like they they can only prey on us or or like um or like hunt us at night or in the darkness and so why uh why do they go to bed at the same time we do no no like I, what i'm saying is like th- so we never see outside <laughs> in the story uh-huh so it's nighttime <laughs> like they're hanging out at like their day is our night and like vice versa do they not have windows they might be boarded up because you know, for protection against the sunlight. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not sure. saying it's vampires, but it's vampires. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, maybe the hunters are using some kind of like optic tech to uh, to, to to be even more invisible to the vampires during like yeah. w- when it's light out and such. Or maybe. Uh, hid vampires can't see humans because they haven't hit puberty yeah. yet. Yeah. Then why couldn't his dad see the humans? Maybe the the the, the humans were being like really sneaky, and so like he got down the stairs, and then the guy like ran up and just snapped his neck. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. And they flick the switch on, and then he's able, oh, I can see a silhouette. It's like, oh, that's all I can see. And then the, the mom is like, nope, and grab the child, run back. Yes, the mom can absolutely see that it's just a human coming up there. Yeah. But the and child then that's is when he... like just about to hit pu- puberty, so he's like kind of able to see them, but not really. Or maybe like they can only see them in the dark, or kind of in the dark, but yeah. like not at light. And so the mom grabs the kid, uh, brings the other kid, the other, like the sister. Uh, like to the bathroom or something like that to hide and then calls the SNTF or the police. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Or it's humans and shadow monsters. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Or if you want to be lame. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm on team Mikey on this one. I like I like this. I like where this is going. <laughs> Cause like, yeah. There's so many variables that have to be explained. Yeah, exactly. Like the like in a in a or yeah, if you if you think on it too hard, yeah, it doesn't really make sense or you need to do some workarounds and stuff. But that initial like, what if it's actually the monsters that are the family and the fa- and the and the thing in the darkness is actually a person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just something interesting to think about. Yeah, of course. Oh. So that's the end of my actual thoughts. Okay. Gamer, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, darkness, imprisoning me, all that I see, absolute horror. I cannot live. I cannot die. <laughs> nice. That's basically what's happening in this. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But my first actual note. Um, I feel safe in my room. The constant reassurance of the lights telling my eyes that there is no danger nearby. The lack of shadows to hide in. The doors and walls keeping me safe. So, I mean, technically, the light in your room is making the room have less shadows. But it's also actually strengthening the shadows that are there. The few that are still there. So, like, it's weakening the shadows' coverage, but not creating a quote-unquote lack of shadows. There are still shadows in your room. Yeah. There's just less of them. Yeah. Yeah. So in the situation where like they can only be in the shadows, if it's the kind of creature that literally can only be in the shadows and only attack you when the shadows are touching you, then yeah, you're fine. But in this case, they can still see you and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Again, if and that's if they are like omnipresent, like in the darkness, like... Mm-hmm. Again, the story's kind of too short. To, like, to, it doesn't go into like ex- and the exact nature of the creatures. But then that's also part of the horror. Is like we don't know a whole lot about these creatures, other than 
the one the things that we've been told by the by the person telling the story so yes i'm also like looking around my room like for shadows and stuff like yeah like the, my my closet is basically the only spot in my room except for like under my chair that has like like deep shadows and that's about it i got like a controller sitting on the ground with like the cable um all around it and the controller and the cable all hold shadows in it I mean, yeah, there's shadows, but I mean, not on the ground with a shadow I mean, beside like, it. Like, I'm, I'm assuming these creatures aren't like they. Uh, again, like we don't know, but like I'm, a, I'm guessing like like it needs. They need to be. There needs to be enough shadow space, kind of like how we need enough, sh- like enough like shadows to hide in. Yeah, they need enough light. <laughs> well, like, oh, and that's the other thing. Like they, they don't even hide in the shadows. They hide in light, so they, they, they could be in my room right now, like because it's yes. fully lit. <laughs> yes, of course. Ooh. So if that was the case, the best move is just to have dim light all the time. Yeah. Like, not absolute darkness, because that doesn't matter. But yeah, I'll move on. Uh, actually, I kind of already talked about this. Just I like the concept of the the dark and the light, and they're only visible in the dark kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay, this quote here, it was just vaguely humanoid. Only a silhouette and walking up the stairs. Their walk was almost in an awkward slow motion, as if it were, as if it would get me eventually. So the description of this is good, especially since he can't see much since it's all in the darkness. But the one thing I would like added to this is mm-hmm. if he's walking on two legs or crawling, because I assumed crawling in an inhuman way because it's a creepypasta. But reading it back, it just says it's vaguely humanoid walking up the stairs, which implies he's just walking on two legs. Yeah, I, I, I've i read it as he's walking up the stairs on, on two legs. Although I do like the idea of like somebody, a creature like crawling very slowly up the stairs, like on all fours. Because like, if it, it's a shadow creature, humanoid shape, but like, I guess if it was humanoid shape and it was down on all fours, you wouldn't say walking, you would say crawling. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So I guess also, because it's walk. Yeah. Yeah. Also, maybe the reason why they don't like he does they don't attack like in the light like all the all the time is because they they can only like walk this like weird like mo- like almost like walking through molasses kind of slowness. So they're just like slow movers, but they will get you. Ev- they will get to you eventually. But like they are if they're determined enough. Yeah, I wonder if they move that slow even in the light. Like the it's not that the darkness is slowing them down. That is just their speed. Yeah. And maybe that's why it takes them forever to get to you because they aren't exactly fast and they have to like set up these weird ambushes. Exactly. Get you yeah. to like repeatedly go back to the same spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why they like they set it up. So there's actually a couple of them in this in this place. Like one's by the kitchen to turn the the tap on <laughs> and like one's like by the door by the by the uh, t- by the wall and then like as soon as you like turn off like turn the light back off or turn it off it's like gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I feel like there's way easier like ways to do this. Like, for example, like if the kid is just sitting down watching the Lord of, Lord of the Rings, like you have lots of time to go get him. <laughs> you have a yeah. If somebody if that kid's marathoning the trilogy. He's fucked. Yeah. Up. He just he, he fucked up. Yeah. Well, that again, that's assuming like they're in the same room and like they can they can get at like they they have to because there's like doors are like trying to be opened and stuff like that or like there's like banging on doors and stuff like that. So it's like. I think they're, the thing we're thinking we're, we keep missing is like they can't pass through walls or they can't well, pass through doors. It's a concept house that doesn't really have many. Doors. Oh, then then he's fucked. <laughs> then yeah. he's straight up fucked. But like, yeah, if he's watching it like in like uh, a closed room or like something, like he's he would be safe. Like, he just hears like some scratching at the doors. Like, oh, man, you know what? Just to be safe, I'm gonna close the door to my room here. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, um, in regards to the. The father and the mother and the sister's deaths. I kind of wish they were explained a bit more. And I I say this because on first reading, I didn't really get the whole neck snap. I just thought that he fell down. Um, An explanation, I don't mean as in like gore porn. I just mean like, how did it happen? Like, did the creature, like, is there a stab wound? Is there a bite wound? Or... But did it use some shadowy <laughs> stuff to like reach into them and harm their internal organs, just like pop his heart or something? But but we got it. <laughs> we did, but again, <laughs> I, I, I did not catch it. Okay. it just, I read it as he just looked over his shoulder. He's like, uh, this is how I'm dying. And then he just falls down dead. Yeah. 
I missed then, reading the, was, por- the point yeah. where it's like his body is still forward and his head is completely round backward. Because it just says he's looking at him. Yeah. You know, not Which, that his I, head is on the wrong way. And to be fair, like, I could e- like a police officer would would def or like a coroner would definitely like oh his his head's like snap back like that yeah that's probably from like falling down the stairs like that seems that I, I'm, I've watched the movie um uh death becomes her where like the one character like falls down the like down like two or two steps uh, two flights of stairs and like her neck twists like back and down a couple of times yeah <laughs> um. So yeah, it, it, it makes it that makes like like if they're snapping people's necks and like uh, like uh, uh, uh like that kind of does make sense of like oh like that's why it's able they're able to like that's why the skeptical like society is able to like oh no they just fell off their bed and broke their neck or yeah because there no was a bat wounds back. or no weird internal wounds that shouldn't be there yeah. exactly yeah but yeah I, I they could have been some like maybe for like the for the mom and the and the sister. At least there could have been like a little bit of a elaboration, so like people like you, <laughs> like they all neck snaps basically. <laughs> yeah, they 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 just like because maybe that's how like they uh they get like that rush of energy like ba- off of people or that ru- like the the death knell basically like the death throw of a person's like energy like last energies. Mm-hmm. Or that's how they siphon life out of you. They snap your neck. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> They're all Steven Seagal's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in regards to like the whole Sorry. next happy thing, um, yeah. I kind of wish the way it was described was backwards. I would have caught it better if it yeah. described that, like he was walking down the stairs as normal, but suddenly his head spun around and he was and he was looking at me, although his body didn't move. You know, it it does it, say it, that though. It, it says it. <laughs> yeah, but it says it like this. Then Dad stopped midway. His head turned to look at me. When you say that. That sounds completely mundane. But then no the next thing is like his body was facing the down the bottom of the steps, but his uh, but he was he was his neck had been turned around to face me. <laughs> yeah, but after already b- drawing something in my mind completely mundane, so I glossed over it that he was just like I already saw it that he turned and he's like, oh, this is how I die. Like I've already had it cemented in my brain that, that is how he looked when he died. So the rest of it was just kind of nothing. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, you I you get it. yeah, I I understand where you're coming from, and like I still love the scene the way it's written, but I can uh, uh to me like also the points against it perhaps it does feel like this part was written like like for a horror story rather than like somebody chronicling the death of their dad. <laughs> like it, it's described in this way to add suspense to like how he died and stuff like that. But you wouldn't do that if you're necessarily in this in this situation if you're like describing your dad dying and stuff like that. Um, so I, I kind of see your point, but like I still love it the way it is. <laughs> okay, sorry. There's just nothing that says it's like turned around because it says his neck was facing the wrong way, just like, and just like that he was dead. Yeah, like that's that. That means his neck neck was snapped. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's just the wording of it didn't really click really Fair. hard for me. That's all. Okay. I mean, we're going to have to agree to disagree. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. And then um, just in regards to the ending as a whole, it kind of, it's pretty sudden wrap up to the whole story. Like I, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like it could have gone on a lot longer, especially since there's like 20 something years of information we don't have. Yeah. Um, it just kind of just summarize like, yeah, mom died of a bathtub accident and, de- and, sm- and, and uh, my sister died of a, bed fall <laughs> like that's it <laughs> yeah but like the story does get its point across so i suppose there's no real need to like beat around the bush and just keep it going although yeah it would be kind of good to at least have a scene of how he's actually living in darkness to explain stuff like oh i don't know food and um yeah like how the level of darkness he's in like is he actually boarding up his house you know how is he getting uh, money to pay for food. How is he getting food? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, the point could be made that like he doesn't, he's not putting that down because he's just trying to get this word out because he's not going to explain how he survived, although he should. Yeah, because he's trying but, to like, help other he's, people. At this point, he's like he's giving up, so he does like whatever. Fuck it, I'm just going to turn lights on and die. I'm done. Well, <laughs> it, it, he it's not worth, Maybe maybe he's he's not <laughs> including it because he doesn't want other people to. 
follow in this because it's pointless. Like he, like he's, he's hit a depression on this or he's hit like a, uh, a moment in his life where he's just given up. So he's just like, I'm not like, this is no, no, no way to live. Like, but just, I'm going to warn people about these creatures that hide in the light. But it, like, oh. did that click midway through him typing this? Cause at the start of this, he's basically writing this as a warning to all this mm-hmm. and how to spot the signs and keep yourself safe. But then he doesn't tell you how to keep yourself safe. Maybe that did happen oh. like that. <laughs> yeah. He explains how to survive. It's by being dead. <laughs> Silent. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> that one thing, yes. Yeah. She does say, like, strength from the darkness to keep silent. Yeah. But again, how long can you do that without eating? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're a vampire. Yeah. That's true. It all makes sense. It doesn't. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's the end of my notes. Okay. Uh, so on to final thoughts then. Um, so this is a pretty short, creepy story uh, with an interesting, like, I think it's a really interesting idea for a monster, or at least it's nature. Um, there are, uh, it, it would certainly, it would certainly utilize, or I, I would certainly utilize it as a, as inspiration for a horror game scenario and even you know maybe um uh, like i'll stat out this creature sometime but like that aside um even despite the the issues like we kind of all point out some issues even i point out some of the some some to me some glaring issues on like the plot and how these things work exactly um or like the lack thereof details <laughs> that are in the story sometimes but i still enjoyed the read and it, it was it was kind of inspiring, so that's why I'm going to still recommend it. Mikey, these stands for evil. So I did enjoy the beginning portion where it brought me back to that uh, idea of the uh, the light causing interdimensional beings to show up. Yeah. Um, with like with that one was luminal the, the, the liminal warehouse. Yeah, Lemon Warehouse. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so that I liked because at that point they hadn't really explained what was going on. I was like, oh, that's brought me back to that. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But then for me, where it falls apart is when he starts explaining that he had to survive 25 years in darkness and he can see the creatures in the darkness, but you can't see creatures in darkness because your eyes only allow you to see light. And uh, so he's not living in total <laughs> darkness. He's living in like dim light or low light yeah. at the very least. From yeah. the sounds of it, the problem is it's not explained enough. Yeah. Uh, well, the fact that he started explaining things, yeah, it's not explained enough. Um. And then, because once we start questioning, well, how is he seeing in the dark, and how is he remaining completely dead silent? Um, and that's where, for me, the story starts to fall apart. Okay. Um, so, like, I would be probably happier if it didn't have the sudden um, transition from kid to, oh, I'm an adult now, and my mom and sister are dead i've been surviving but not explaining how he's been surviving and yeah like i could have i could maybe see like maybe they tried surviving like maybe the whole family like after the dad's death uh they they continued on and they actually tried they they all tried finding a way to survive like together but the creatures were picking them off one by one every time and so like by this point like it's all that's left is is the the one guy and he's just he's he's managed to do it because he's managed to find like he's basically through trial and error through the death of his his other family members and maybe that's why he's also lost so much hope uh in surviving is because like he's lost everybody so yeah but he would have lost that hope a lot sooner than 31 years it's just suddenly kicking in or maybe that's vampire puberty when once you hit what 45 you're (laughs) <laughs> well and and again like we're just told like mom died of this and mom and sister died of that we don't know how long like how long it took for that for them to die like when when did they get a kill like it might in that 25 years or in that time span we we could have used more information regarding like 
when they died because like maybe the sister died like only a couple of months ago and like he's now he's just that's when he's just finally given up yeah because he's like i'm next i'm gonna die next so i'm gonna like, get it over with yeah exactly yeah but it would have been nice to have that explained or fleshed yeah. out or yeah. something yeah. to be honest when i first read that the uh like later on uh, the mother dies and the sister died i just imagined them living normal lives I don't. I didn't imagine them trying to be, like, to hide this, like mm-hmm. to hide in the darkness and all that. They were just living normally and then just died. And, and then he's the yeah. only one that's actually noticing this, because it yeah, doesn't that, say yeah. that they've tried to live in darkness for years, but they still got them over time. Yeah, that's true. Like it could have been just like that. They were just being picked off like slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like no matter what we did, they yeah. still got us. One. After, How far uh, away we got from that neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah, because there's nothing yeah. described, it seems like they're doing nothing to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the that's where, like, this whole... Uh, honestly, I would be happier if we didn't have the whole time jump. Um, or elaborate and, on the time jump, rather than, like... Or elaborate on the time jump, yeah. or uh, just put something in there to end it sooner, because, I mean, we have this section where it says... Well, the most obvious answer is, after all, that 12,000 people die of steroid accidents a year. And that, and say, so like, but I know it wasn't <laughs> the. Yeah, so, so is that to insinuate that, like, <laughs> like, most of those kills were actually from these creatures? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or is it so, just the statistics to uh, like like that's added to like make the the skeptical excuse more plausible? Like yeah, like oh, it's not the supernatural creature; it's just like people die from from falling down the stairs all the time, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you wanted to have that sort of zinger at the end, I would say like, but I know otherwise or whatever, and then you still have the zinger, but you don't have all the stuff that happened after 31 years like we get a very small section of that was all 31 years ago <laughs> like yeah <laughs> I, I think i think the problem is that um it starts just kind of ramping up like the speed of like let's get the story done at it's been 31 yeah. years <laughs> yeah. since that event so it's like oh okay <laughs> yeah uh so for me, I'm still only going to partially recommend this. Okay. Um, if we, if you go to the vampire family angle, then this is a lot. I can recommend this more. <laughs> not a not um, a full recommendation, but like more than partial. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, because then you go okay, because then you see the little details, like the niche neighborhood and the. Um, the father's face changing and by putting on his comfort face. Um, <laughs> comfort face. <laughs> uh, and it's just little things like that that make you could would make you go, oh yeah, that totally vampires. Uh, but yeah, a, as it stands, it's only a a partial for me. Okay, gamer. Uh, for me, I really like the concept that this puts forth, like doing the absolute opposite of what feels safe for human beings, um, being what is actually safe for you. Like being in the darkness is the safe aspect, and being in the light is when you're actually in danger. Mm-hmm. Um, like the story's short and to the point. Um, it has a reason to be posted online because he's presumably typing this up and putting it online as a warning. So it has good immersion points for that. Um, the only real issue I had was being unaware of like how the creatures walked and the, the death scene wasn't as clearly described for my stupid brain. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, it's pretty solid. Um, I, I'm with Mikey that I wish there was some more description of what happened in those like 20, 30 years. Yeah. Like, did the the family change how they lived? Did they move? Like, did they stay in the same house? Like, 
There's nothing. It could have also been like they were like they were fine for 31 years or for however uh, however long it was, and then just recently, mom died from a bathtub incident, and then sister died shortly after. Like so, the thing just like waited for some reason. It waited like this long, and then finally decided to like pick off the family completely. Yeah, and that would be yeah. fine. Yeah, but, but we don't get that. We don't get those details. No, that, and that's unfortunate because, as I said at the start, I really like the concept of how these creatures work. That's mm-hmm. really cool. But it does need some more fleshing out, some more descriptors along the way. I'll still recommend this just because of how much I like the the concept of the of the monsters. But it it's gonna have to be like a low recommendation because I do <laughs> truly think it needs more. Descriptors. Yeah, and. Honestly, I'm I'm also with you guys. Like, I do feel like there could have been a lot more. Like, we could have gotten a little bit more details about like how he's been surviving or like how the family lived on afterward, like after the events, just mm-hmm. to kind of like add a little bit more like, um, like meat to the bones of the story, especially like to, to like to, to to make it more other than just to make it feel like because as it is right now, it does kind of feel like it just, they just kind of skimped on the details at the end of the story. Like just because like he's ready to like just end it, but like could use a little bit more details, a little bit more clear, a little bit more information <laughs> would have been nice. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, okay, so two recommendations and a partial recommendation. Uh, if you like what you heard, or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below. This gets posted, whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. Uh, we're all on Twitter. You can send us messages there. Uh, Mikey is at the East stands for evil. The gamer. Yeah. The gamer in yellow is at the gamer in yellow without that W. Cause his name is very long. Mm-hmm. And I'm at review cultist. Uh, you can also send us emails at al dente at gmail.com. That's a L D E N T E R I G A M O R T I S at gmail.com. Where you can also leave us suggestions for other creep pastas, SCPs, spooky things. You creep it. We'll peep it. Yeah. yeah. And if you'd like to help support our show financially, you can go to Patreon. Look up the... Oh, select the back of tier you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, early access, extra content. To our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. And as always, we very much appreciate that. And to our listeners and the authors of these stories, thank you immensely. Because without your listenership, it'd be like screaming into the void. And without your story that you've posted on you you created and posted online with this really cool concept that like i think we all liked <laughs> like i i think the the concept of the creature is really cool uh like yes. like round r- around the whole table here um but yeah like without that and without like the story itself to be posted online for people to look at and check out and stuff we really wouldn't have much of a show because we'd have nothing to talk about so thank you until next time i have been your host review cultist I'm Mikey, E stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And this has been Aldente Rigamortis. Sleep well.